I want you just to close your eyes just for a second if you can. And I want you to think about your mum. We all had one. And I want you to think about something that you have appreciated about your mother. Maybe it's a scene in your mind. Maybe something that typifies or symbolizes the kind of woman your mum has been to you and is to you. It's great to connect with those memories. It's great to connect with those scenes and the wonderful richness that our mums have provided and brought to us in our lives. And if there is a sense of gratitude, if there is a sense of appreciation in what you sense for your mother this morning, can I encourage you? Let her know it. Words are very powerful. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, the scripture says. And words... Spoken in encouragement, spoken with love, can be such a source of great blessing to encourage our mothers. And uh, if it, put in a card. If you, if you haven't said something to them today and you have that opportunity, give them a call. But I'm also aware this morning that there are some of us for whom our mums have passed away. And I want to pray for those, particularly this morning. I just feel a nudge in my heart. I want to pray for those of us whose mums are lo- no longer with us. That's true in my own experience. My mum passed away five years ago, and this morning when I got out of bed, I just spent a few moments just in my heart just thinking about my mum and how precious she has been to me over the years. And I'd like us to pray for our mums that have passed on. Father, this morning we thank you for mothers. Now I want to specifically pray, Lord, uh, specifically pray for our mums who are no longer with us, who have passed away, passed from this life and into eternity. And Lord, that's often mixed with its own sense of grief and loss. And we acknowledge that this morning. But we thank you for the special woman how our mums have been. Our mums haven't been perfect, but they've been very significant women in our lives. The way they've loved, they've nurtured, they've sacrificed. They've given of themselves um, in, in ways only heaven truly knows. And so we thank you for those precious memories and experiences, the way that their love, who they are as mothers, has touched and shaped our lives today. And we're grateful for that. We acknowledge our mums before you. We honour their memories. We honour their legacy. We, We are grateful, Lord. And we just want to say thank you this morning. And I want to pray comfort, Lord. To those for whom the loss of our loved ones, our mums particularly, is still something of, um, of grief. Lord, would you bring comfort and, and grace into our hearts, our spirit, and into our experience, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning we have a, a very special panel uh, that are going to be sharing with us about real motherhood in a messy world. And so I'd like us to put your hands together for our ladies at the front here. Thanks, Neil. So, yes, we have some pretty special ladies up here on the stage this morning. And um, they have very graciously said yes to me <laughs> when I asked if they would be happy with being interviewed on the panel this morning about motherhood. So, um, thanks, girls. Give them a clap before we start, will you? So I'm going to be asking, asking each of these ladies some questions just to kind of touch on and just to get a little snippet and a hint about what motherhood is for them and how they've got to that place and our theme today was real mothers in a messy world and yeah it is kind of a messy world out there and it isn't an easy job being a mum. So I'm going to start now with the first question for Kelly and for Jen. Um, to reach the place you are right now you know you've had been greatly influenced by your own mother and I'd just love you to tell us please share with us um, how has your mum and her mothering impacted upon you and the role you you have now okay where you go Kelly um, my name's Kelly just for is this on yeah um, I'm married to Glenn just a little introduction for who I am I have three gorgeous daughters um, I'm one of five kids second the um, second child uh, the oldest daughter so my mum was always a busy woman had lots of um, things happening um, but I guess I always remember she always took time for us um, I remember Actually, I was thinking about it last night, and probably the person that I am today, I, I owe a massive amount to my mum. Um, you know, the way you, a child watches their parents, um, the good and the bad. 
um, the way she cared for people and how she was so generous. She always made time for people when they'd pop in. She'd always make them a cup of tea or, you know, if they arrived at dinner time, she'd offer them food, even if we didn't have enough. She'd always make it, stretch it out. Um, so my mum was an amazing, generous woman. Um, and just, you know, she taught us um, how to do things just by us walk, uh, working alongside her. And, yeah, so I guess I can owe my cooking skills to her as well. But, um, yeah, my mum was an amazing woman. And not just the good stuff. I, I remember, you know, she was honest with the, the tough stuff as well. And the lessons that I learned through her saying to me, oh, hey, Kelly, you know, don't do life this way. I did it this way, and I ended up with all this heartache. Um, so she explained to me things as well. Um, yeah, so an amazing woman. And I've got amazing um, memories too of just, you know, birthdays that we celebrated where mum would make a big fuss of us and cook us our favourite meals and, yeah, lots of great things. It sounds amazing, especially with five children. It's really difficult to actually make that time for each child individually and it sounds like she did a great job. Yeah, especially around birthdays and things, Kelly. Thank you. Jen, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jennifer, married to Neil, and I have two awesome children, Jonathan and Zoe. And <laughs> um, I just, my experiences of growing up, I grew up on a farm and I was the last child of five, so my mum was also very busy. Um, my childhood was you know, just a really precious time. Mum was um, really provided for us. She cooked beautiful meals. She, um, she was very busy and she, but she, I guess the wonderful example she set of her devotion to God, she was passionately devotion, devoted to God. I was talking to her yesterday. She got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was a baby and she was just, wanted to serve God with all her heart and we'd have family devotions every night. She insisted upon that where we'd um, sing some songs and read the Bible. Um, she, she gave us a wonderful sense of freedom on the farm. I, as a primary school day, she would have let us off on the farm. She really trusted us and... Um, I mean, she taught me to cook. She, <laughs> I was just the memories of, you know, we got inner tubes from the tractor tyres and we'd do whitewater rafting down the river as a primary school kid. I'd bring all my friends over and they'd borrow all my woolen jumpers and we'd get it all wet and muddy. And, you know, it was just a lot of, a lot of freedom and a real sense of security in my home. Um, I just wanted to share a precious experience Recently I had, my mum had a heart attack, she's 85 now, and um, she was in Waikato Hospital, so I went down to visit her. As I arrived and walked into the room, the curtains were around her bed. Um, just to give you some background, her generation didn't tend to praise her children much, because that's, you just didn't do that back then, you might give them a swelled head or something, I don't know. And um, I heard her skiting to the nurse about her children and she was starting on her oldest one and working her way down and I thought, hang on a minute, I'm not going to interrupt, I want to hear what she says about me. <laughs> <laughs> so I stood outside the curtain and just waited and um, she didn't know I was there and she started just accolading me and it just meant so much, you know, she just said how loving I was and, and that I was a fantastic daughter. And, it just, you're never too old to hear from your parents how, how precious you are to them. Yeah. yeah, thanks Jen. You're never too old to be encouraged. Think about that. Encouragement is always appreciated. <laughs> thanks girls. Lisa, here's one for you. Our topic, as I said, was real mums in a messy world. So Lisa, first of all, introduce yourself and just tell us about the blessings and challenges of being a mum in a messy world. I mean, you're, you out of all of us have the youngest children, so perhaps some of those things we saw on the screen you might be able to think, oh yes, just one toilet stop. But can I just, Lisa, can you answer our question? Sure. Thanks, Joy. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Lisa Marshall. I'm married to Daniel Marshall, who's the youth pastor here. Um, hi. <laughs> um, we, have t we have two children, Samuel, who's eight, and Julia, who's four and a half, who was dedicated this morning, which was extremely precious to us. Um, I am come from a family with a mum and a dad and um, two brothers. I'm the oldest and the only girl, so I'm bossy. <laughs> it was bound to happen. Um, and my parents have been missionaries on and off for most of our life, so we've kind of travelled and lived an extraordinary, strange, God-filled life sort of thing. 
Um, yeah, so funnily enough, I've ended up, I didn't want to be in um, ministry when I was growing up because I saw what it did, you know, the challenges of, of what my parents went through. But God had other ideas and clearly he had prepared me for it. Um, so I'm back into ministry, um, willingly. And yeah, I thoroughly love our life that we have. The challenges that I find being a mother within youth ministry especially is that it's very unpredictable. And youth ministry um, and the people that we um, have in our life, it's 24-7, um, which means that the family life gets a little bit disrupted sometimes. So the challenges for me are trying to keep consistency with things like homework and discipline um, healthy eating, um, all these sorts of things that um, are a normal struggle for mothers anyway. But I, yeah, I, I find that challenging. I find that I must, I have to remember that my children, my children in my home that I gave birth to, I need to put them first as well as all the other children that I have in my home who I also need to care for. And, and yes, yeah, so I find that challenging. Um, I feel like, um, yeah, was it challenges or did you want me to? Oh, the blessings. Oh my gosh, there's so many blessings. Um, we are so lucky to have so many amazing youth around our family and so many amazing people um, like Chrissy and George and Naomi and Martin and people like that who invest heavily into our children and to us. Um, and I feel like there's so many great, um, especially lovely teenage girls like Zoe and Tamar who just want to put into our kids so much um, and Dan and Ben and Zeph who just rile my son up to crazy heights. We have to make sure it stops before bedtime. But um, yeah, there's just so much stuff and, and they learn how to communicate well with adults and they learn how to, um, you know, they value themselves, as I was saying before. So there's just, the blessings are just overwhelming in our, in our life. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. And, and a phrase just comes to my mind, which is a quote from Ian Grant. And he said that we are the builders of our children's life and everybody else is a subcontractor. So we need to really hold on to that one. It's a really strong truth, isn't it? That we're the builders. And all the other people, fantastic as they may be, are the subbies who we actually contract them. <laughs> so ladies, this is a question for all of us. I know that um, how we parent often reflects a certain style. And I'm interested just to find out what that style is for you. And I'll start since I haven't had a turn yet. My name's Joy, I'm married to Barry, and we have four adult children and two young grandchildren. Um, my parenting style, I would love to say that I'm consistent all the time. I would love to say that I was a great family coach, but really my underlying parenting style is a bit of a jellyfish, as we call it. Um, I do tend to, would tend to give in as my natural style. It's like, it's okay, it's easier, faster, and we'll get better done if I do it. So you go and play. You know, that was who I was. I'm not really like that now. But, um, yeah, I did tend to kind of give in, and I was very, very busy plugging holes and putting patches on things so everything was calm, everything ran smoothly, and the glue flowed nicely between all areas. Um, that was who I was. Now, um, as a grown-up, um, I realise that I'm a lot more consistent with my parenting, but now that the grandchildren have come along, those jellyfish tendencies are rising up. <laughs> it's like, Nana, shall we bake now? Sure. <laughs> Nana, shall we do this? Yep. So um, I notice that they're still there. <laughs> I just have to keep checking in. Jen, tell us about your parenting style. Well, I was brought up really strict, so that was what I knew. And I was quite a structured parent. Um, did some parenting courses, um, prep for tech parenting courses. So started off very structured with, um, you know, routine feeding and... I guess, done with a lot of love, but quite strict and disciplined. I guess we, Neil and I were in youth ministry at the time, very busy church. Um, we didn't have a lot of extended family. I was it, you know. I had to be in charge. I had to be organised because I didn't have anyone to back me up, you know. I mean, Neil was very supportive, but we had wonderful people like Andrew McCormick and his wife Helen that used to babysit for us, which was great. But... Um, I, I don't know if you saw the messy picture of the advertising. My son, if he'd done that with his food, he would have got his hand smacked. And <laughs> you can empathise with him later. And told to use a spoon. You know, I was, I was quite firm in my parenting style, yeah. Thanks, Jen. Lisa? 
Um, I am definitely still in my jellyfish parent stage. Um, I like to think that when my children are adults, I will have sorted it out. Oh, there's hope, there's time. Um, I, I tend to flip between being very much just whatever, we'll get it done, and yeah, it's easier to do it myself. And then I get really strict and really because I've reached my limit. So I am right smack bang in the middle of trying to get the right parenting style. Um, thankfully, I'm married to a wonderful man <laughs> who is pretty consistent there, with Jan. his yeah. parenting. So, um, yeah, I am. He, he is very consistent, so it's, it's good. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit jellyfishy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is a no blame, no shame, okay? No blame, no shame. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Um, I'd like to thank, I'm like a parent coach. I quite like structure as well. So Glenn and I did a few courses and it didn't take me long to figure out that actually what looks good in theory isn't always so good in practice. So we've kind of molded as we've gone. But my default would be Sergeant Major. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I can negotiate and we can work things through. And But if I'm tired or if I'm grumpy or if I've just had enough, Sergeant Major comes out. So l look out. Okay. Can we have a little example of that now? No? No? No. Okay. No, no. That's fine. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> um, so I did a bit of a quick count up. Um, between us, we have approximately 74 years of parenting experience here. Now that's where you clap. Okay. <laughs> I've got the most years, by the way, like nearly 33, okay, so that's fine. Um, and so we've been around the track a few times, and so what's some simple advice that you would pass on to mothers who, you know, they're, they're in different stages here, what's just a couple of words that you would think would get them through some of those times? Let's start at that end again, Kelly. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect mother, so kind of just chill out, relax, and if you need help, don't be afraid to ask. Um, I would say that if you're worrying about whether you are being a good mother, that's a really good place to start. You probably are much better than you think you are if you're worrying about it. <laughs> if you're not. <laughs> I just think love them, love them, love them. You know, you're their mum, you understand them. Seek to understand them better. I think one thing that was really helpful was doing toolbox and um, understanding our personality types of all the individuals in my family. My daughter and Zoe and I might look alike, but we're quite different personalities. And just understanding that she was um, a different personality to me and really understanding her has helped my mother and daughter relationship. And I think it's so helpful to understand who you are and who they are as individuals. And yeah, just really love them. Yeah, awesome, Jen. I would say a few things. I would say don't sweat the small stuff. And it's taken me many years to get to that point. Don't sweat the small stuff. It doesn't actually matter. A lot of that stuff that you know you race around a thousand miles an hour doing, don't sweat the small stuff. Another one is don't ever make a rule you wouldn't be prepared to get out of the shower to enforce. Okay? Don't have loads and loads of rules. Just have a few very good ones. And my last one is no one loves your kids like their mother. So that mother's love is something that is extremely special. Okay, now our last one is if you were to fill a capsule or a treasure box um, with all, those, all your personal treasures about who you are as a person, what would you put inside that box? Who are you? Jen, let's start with you. Um, I would put um, love notes from Neil. I would put... <laughs> Um, I put my gardening gloves, I love to garden. I put a photo of us as a family at the Taj Mahal. That was a real special time for us as a family. Um, I would put notes and cards from the kids that I've received over the years too. Maybe my knitting needles. Um, I love crafts and books. Um, also my nursing badge and probably my cell phone with all my contacts and my friends and, <laughs> and family and yeah just um, all those precious relationships you have. It's cool, Jen. Thank you. Kelly, how about you? Um, I, what would I put in? I'd put coffee 
because I love coffee. Good coffee beans, yeah. And I'd probably have to put the espresso maker too because it's no good without the It's a big machine. box. There's no, there's no limit to the yeah. size of this oh, box. It's, big. it's fine. It's big. Okay. It's big. Um, I was joking that I'd put my dog, but that's, that might be a bit evil, so I might put a photo of my dog. Obviously, there'd be um, photos of the, the girls um, and our family holidays. Um, there would be pictures of Glenn and me travelling because that's, you know, time spent together is just fantastic. Um, did I say my gumboots, my gardening gloves, uh, worship CDs, because I love to worship God, and probably my Bible. Here we go, darling. Um, I would put in um, photos of our family holidays that we've had um, with my extended family and our family here that we've had at Kaiwi Lakes last summer. Um, that was extremely precious to me. I would put in, it might sound a little bit superficial, but I would put in my makeup and my favourite pair of shoes because those things that's matter fine, to me that's so fine, much. That's fine. Yeah, that's it a takes nice, a long woman. time to collect that stuff. Um, I would put in music. I would put in all my music from when I was growing up, so all of my Pearl Jam and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would probably put in a bottle of wine. Go you! Yay! You need to tell us where that treasure box is hidden, okay? Right. In my treasure box, I would put in my knitting needles because they have very special bamboo knitting needles and they cost a fair bit. And I'm a knitaholic. I'm always knitting. It keeps me awake at night. I always knit all the time. So my knitting needles are straight away in there. My recipe book with all my baking cake recipes would be in there. I love baking. Don't like cooking that much, but ask for a cake and it's there. I love baking. I would put in my walking shoes because I love walking. I would put in love notes from my Basil too because I've got some too. So you can say, oh, that's nice for him, to encourage him. Well, love notes from my Basil. <laughs> Basil, that's Barry, by the way. Um, I would put in my children's plunket books. And I would also put in something that is very, very special and I just got last year, but it took like, oh, it's taken 25 years to get this. And it's a photograph of my children with Santa. I know it sounds a bit weird, but one of my children, and I'm not going to name this boy, <laughs> one of my children was absolutely petrified of the guy in the red suit. To the point where if you walked into the mall and it was Christmas time, you had to be ready to grab and run the child because he was just petrified. So all through those years, all I really wanted was a photo with my kids with Santa. Never, ever, ever got one. Then last year, my eldest daughter, Monique, she thought, right, we're going to fix this. So she rounded up her brothers and sister and took them to the mall or organized for them to go to the mall on the Saturday morning. And they had a shot with Santa. <laughs> yes, big clap for her. <laughs> And they framed this and had it for me. And really, Barry even videoed me receiving it. It was like, ah! Lots of, ah! But it's very, very special. And my son who's scared, the one called Daniel, that I'm not going to mention, is on the extreme end of the photograph. <laughs> and I said, Dan, why are you standing there? He said, check out that guy. He's really scary. <laughs> so, yeah, that would definitely be in the box because that's really, really special for a whole lot of reasons, as you can imagine, organising adult kids together and, and keeping it a secret um, is very special. So, yeah, that would have been my treasure box. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Think about that yourself, actually, ladies. What would you put in your treasure box? Things that are really, you know, who you are. Yeah, I'd throw in a worship CD too as well. Well, that's it. That's it for a panel. Please give these ladies a clap for sharing themselves with us this morning.